Hey, what it do, y'all? It's Lord <laughs> Shoe. We back with another episode. Not really sure what segment this is going to be on, but rest assured, it's going to be a great episode full of um, insightful commentary. And y'all yeah. enjoy. Um, today, I have a very special guest. Uh, this is somebody that I would consider a very good friend of mine, pretty close. I, w- I would say that, too. Um, also, she is a great artist. Wonderful personality, very spiritual person that um, I don't feel alone when I talk to this person like I do with most people. So um, okay. without further ado, <laughs> I would like to introduce to y'all Zamora. Now, Hi, you can um, tell them your whole name and all that, but that's how I'm going to introduce you. Okay. So go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm Zamora. I'm 23 years old. I'm a visual artist, an illustrator, and the owner of Olive Beth Artistry. And so today I just wanted to talk a little bit more about my business and the recent article that um, was released by Canvas Rebel Rebel Magazine. Um, But a little bit more about my business. Alabeth Artistry is a community that is, um, is, is a spiritual community aimed to inspire artists to, (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay. (laughs) Inspire artists. Um, (laughs) to create and share their art with the world. And this would be artists of all mediums. So whether you cook or paint or um, write, um, make music, anything like that. And we also inspire everyone to embrace their divinity because I believe that we're all um, spiritual beings having a human experience here on earth. And Mm -hmm. um, yes. (laughs) <laughs> Some of the ways that we inspire is through um, affirmation boards, crystals, um, paintings. We do have an Etsy up right now, which is Olivebeth Artistry Co. And uh, we also are on Instagram and Facebook where we post more about our business and just inspirational things, things like that. Yep. And we also have monthly newsletters as well, which are very nice. Um Right now, I don't have like a, so far, uh, the way that I've gotten emails for the monthly news newsletters or for um, events and things like that, like I was able to get emails through events, but if someone would like to join the newsletter, they could just message um, Olive Beth Artistry on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so y'all heard it from her. Y'all check out her website, her Etsy. Um, also, the newsletters, they're very interesting, y'all. So please join her email list. Get up-to-date content. Make sure you stay tuned in with what she has going on. So let's get into this um, Canvas Revel inter- interview that you did. Um, how exactly did you um, pull that off? I mean, How did I pull that off? Well, yeah. apparently, apparently it was introduced by you, Shu. <laughs> Oh really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> she That's was the reason. Yeah, she was the reason why I um ended up doing the the magazine article. Um, he referred me for the whole thing, and I was really excited to do it. And um, it was released on September seventh, twenty twenty three. Um, and I really enjoyed writing for it and stuff like that. And so, <clears throat> um. Yeah, at first I kind of wanted to say that I was really excited initially to collaborate with Shu because he's, um, of course, he's a business and he helps me like a mentor and stuff like that. But he's also very in tune with his spirituality. So that was very beneficial for me because my business is spiritual based. So someone that was like mainly business focused, it could have went in a completely different direction. But I feel like I have, um, mm, I feel like it's easier to navigate with everything uh, with someone who kind of understands where I'm coming from. And I was really inspired by the things that he does and how he um, incorporates his spirituality into the different projects that he does. So, yeah. And I had one other teacher in high school in my senior year where she was um, more in tune with her spirituality and we started talking and stuff like that. And so I think that that also kind of 
that also kind of um, influenced me on the path that I am now. Because um, so the first question on the Canvas Rebel Rebel Magazine um, interview was, how can we better prepare students for a more fulfilling life and career? And initially, I wanted to talk a little bit about like my background in education. So I went to Ramsey High School in Birmingham, Alabama. And um, I was a valedictorian in my class. I was very focused on school um, since I started school. Ever since I was like at a young age, I had this very big goal and vision to um, achieve, be successful so that I could get a good job, <laughs> make money. I mean, this is like the generic, the whole generic type of thing that most people kind of like strive for. Yeah, make a lot of money so that could get me like a nice house, live a nice lifestyle and stuff like that. And um, eventually I just realized that um, I just needed to kind of go on my own path. Um, school for me was always something that I was good at, but it didn't really give me life. So... I don't know. People always assume that I really liked school because I was really good at it, because I was really smart. But um, I never really liked it that much, to be honest. <laughs> and so um, it was probably like multiple factors. Yeah. Like how I mentioned, like in the article, one of the things I have is that your interests are important and I feel that they should be incorporated into your education. So for me, um, that was pretty simple because they had like art clubs in um, school and stuff like that. But even towards high school, there was a big focus on like sports and stuff like that. Um, I think the appreciation of the arts is really important in general. But I think for students, um, their interest, even if it's like video games or something like that, it should be it should be incorporated into um, their education because eventually it could possibly turn into another career or a stream of income, whether you decide to go to college or not, or right. yeah, whatever you decide to do in life. Um, I also said that volunteering is very important. I did a good amount of volunteering throughout school. Um, one of the, one of my favorite programs that I was in was youth serve. And um, you get a greater sense of community and connectedness when you do volunteering. Um, they just say, mainly in school, what I've heard is that they say it's like good to give back, but, and that's true, but some things I feel should be like a little bit, like explained a little bit deeper. Like when you're volunteering, you're literally working with other people. Most of the time it's people that you don't know. So you're making new connections. So it can be networking. But then you're also, um, you're getting life experience through it. Cause I can't say you're not getting anything back cause yeah. you're getting like life experience. And like one time when I was with Youth Serve, um, one of the community service events that we did was uh, help this business owner. And so we were painting her building. So all of us got together and we painted her building and she was a entrepreneur and opening her business and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. <laughs> and, yeah, it sounds fun, um, actually. Yeah, it was very, very fun. And um, the last thing that I have is that gardening. I feel that gardening should be incorporated in school from kindergarten, shoot, even pre-K. Yeah. Pre-K all the way up. All the way up. I agree. Until, yeah, until high school. Because... um. As you're planning and stuff like that, you're um you directly see like the cycle of life. And so now you can pretty much I feel like you'll kind of like with volunteering, you'll be more connected to everyone around you, but you'll also be more connected to the earth in general because we are living here and that's just like really important. And I feel like that will also help you find your spark because the earth literally helps you do those things <laughs> like yes. it's speaking to you if you're willing to listen like the plants and the earth all of that it speaks to you yeah and so yeah and then I also have um, most importantly each student must be sparked with the urge to live a more fulfilling life and career and um 
I think my spark kind of, hmm, my spark kind of started before, before I was in school. I guess I would say that because for me personally, like I had like a lot of struggles and stuff. Like my lifestyle was not um, that stable when I was younger. And so that that's what kind of like pushed me to want to do great and do everything I could to really achieve the lifestyle that I desired. Um, so for some students, it does happen, like their spark happens or um, the thing that pushes them happens before they end up in school. But there are going to be a lot of students and there are a lot of students where it happens in school. So that's why it's important to incorporate these different things. And for the ones who already have their spark, um, the gardening, the volunteering, and like their interests, that will kind of like help them grow like a plant. That'll, yeah. that'll make the soil fertile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like how you brought that all together. Like yeah. they're all little, little plants. <laughs> Y'all some little flowers. Yeah. yeah, that's real cool. I mean, it's true though. Um, I don't think schools understand that, but we always have to remember too with schools, they're they're just kind of made to create employees, not really self-sufficient people like mm -hmm. they can depend on their own. So, yeah, I think uh, there should be more businesses that kind of push that narrative out there because they just looking mm -hmm. for employees, not like people who want to grow and learn. So I think Thank your you. business brings will bring that out of a lot of people, even the people that aren't your customers. They'll just be inspired by your business. So that's actually really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like how you brought that all together. That's what's up. <laughs> that was fine. Yeah, coming straight from the dome. Yeah, nah, see, <laughs> this is why it's always good to have, like, healthy conversations like this so people can see a different perspective. Like, not all businesses are just, like, I mean, we in it for the money. Don't get it twisted. But we want to serve our communities and also take some of this money to do that also. And just being able to provide – um a different outlook in regards to education and um, finances It's it makes the new economy of spiritual entrepreneurs. Like that's a big thing. So shout out to you for, for being a pioneer in your own right. So yeah. Yeah. For and, sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The money is nice. It is. <laughs> but I, can, I can say like since working, cause now I work, um, at the Grand Canyon and stuff like that, like since having like a very like stable income and job and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, I enjoy like working for my business. I mean, I did enjoy it before, but now it feels like more free and I feel like in this current moment, cause I know eventually it'll probably be like my main thing. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, you never know, but, <laughs> but yeah, you really um, don't. It feels more free. Like it feels like I can just kind of like take the pressure off of solely making money and really focus on like the community aspect and really connecting with people. So I really like that. And I think that's important to have some type of thing that you're truly passionate about that really doesn't, the money is not the main thing. It is really important. True so, that. So yeah. you say yourself like leading with the community stuff first and then. Once once you start feeling like more connected, then it's like, all right, it's time to start cashing out. Yeah, like, just take off. It'll just yeah, take off after exactly. the day. Yeah. Cause okay. your spiritual foundation is very important. Mm -hmm. Like your spiritual, even like as a individual, your <laughs> spiritual foundation is like that's what's gonna keep you going. It don't matter how much money you make, something could happen to you spiritually and all of that stuff could just go away or something like that. Yeah. So like you need to have a very strong spiritual foundation and um that'll also make your business more stable everything like that so yeah yeah the individual becomes the group anyway so if, if one person has a strong foundation like your community it just they all it just it just spreads like a virus yes <laughs> and so, like a positive one <laughs> <laughs> what would that even be called i don't know uh... <laughs> i don't know but love <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that's what i'm gonna um, call it <laughs> so the second question or the second one that i wanted to go over mm -hmm. um what's a lesson that you had to unlearn and this one um 
Oh, was this one in the interview I was saying that uh, as you grow up you have to let go of the child that you once were um, that was very um, programmed into me that was very programmed into me like at a young age and that was like that was just something that was like an idea that was surrounding me a lot yeah. um I guess after watching the adults, like a lot of adults are like, oh, you don't want to grow up. And uh, I just experienced a lot of adults that didn't actually enjoy their lives. They didn't enjoy their job. They didn't enjoy their relationships. So, yeah. Sounds depressing. <laughs> yes, it was very, <laughs> very depressing. Jeez. And so I realized, eventually I realized that my inner child had all the answers. Like when you're young, you're... um. Oh, yeah. You're amazed by all these things and um, you're very in tune with like the universe, your soul and like the other side as a child. And so all of that kind of helps you um, to live out your purpose or like um, to help you live out a pretty fulfilling life. Like your child is like an inner guide and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, children are very in tune with the spiritual, with the spirit realm, the spirit realm. Everything is spiritual because before it becomes physical. So that's another reason why it's important to um, be in tune with your inner child because they help you like manifest and all of that stuff. And so when you close off your inner child, it's like a, that's like a very strong part of yourself that, hmm, I, I don't know. It's I like imagination like just dies. I mean, your yeah. inner child. Well, manifestation. It's like Squidward. Squidward don't <laughs> Not Squidward. <laughs> For real, because he was so nah. bitter. He yeah. was so bitter. And like, he was His always homies was sad. killing him, bro. <laughs> like, because he know yeah. he couldn't play the clarinet. And they like, good job, Squidward. Like, why is y'all lying <laughs> yeah. to this man? And so me and my friend was just talking about uh, the episode... <laughs> When SpongeBob and Patrick was in the box, they yeah. was in the box and they yeah, was that's like, how life, yo. <laughs> they was thinking like all of this stuff and they were like using their imagination. And Scooper was trying to go in the box and he was just mad as well. No way. In the box. See. Yes, because he couldn't see what they saw and stuff like that. And his life was just, his life yeah. was so. Everybody, hard. don't be a Squidward, y'all. <laughs> you know how yeah, many Squidwards we see every day and we work with Squidwards. Mm-hmm. So, mm. so as far as the <laughs> as Poor far Squidward. as like as far as like everything is spiritual before it becomes physical, I even I see my art before I create it. And um God saw the world before it was a reality. And um it's a bar. Yeah. So I also wrote down, I was like, um, so at the beginning in Genesis, um, God says, let there be light. And so your inner child is the light. And I also wrote down, don't leave them in the dark. And this is the illumination of your mind is very important. Stuff like that. I hope all of this is making sense. <laughs> yeah. I hope all of this is making sense. <laughs> I mean, it makes um, sense to me, but I for, know. for the listeners and the watchers right now, I know. <laughs> y'all get y'all getting some uh Actually, it's it's really not that abstract. What you're saying is not abstract at all. It's just yeah. the I'm pretty sure there won't be a whole lot of squirrels watching this episode. But if y'all yeah. are, uh, <laughs> just ride it out, ride it out. There, this is this is uh soul food. Yeah. So I also wrote down. Sometimes your life can get so cold as a child but as you get older it's important to alchemize that energy and realize that you learned from the challenges that you face so I come across a lot of people who kind of uh as they face their challenges in their life they kind of let the challenges beat them down and I've had moments like that too so I understand it but um if you want your life to continue to get better then it's important to kind of look at them as like lessons that you learned along the way instead of like something that defeated you. Yeah. And that also kind of led me to um think about the trip that I just had. So 
I just went to Death Valley in California. That was my first time. This is my second time going to California, but my first time going to Death Valley. Um, so it was, it's a park, uh, Death Valley National Park. And they have this place there um, called the Oasis. And the reason why that was so interesting to me, well, first off, it was like all these palm trees, like in the middle of the freaking desert with mm -hmm. all these mountains surrounding it. <clears throat> and some of the mountains, it was snow. So it was crazy to see like snow on mountains in the distance and then palm trees right there in front of you. It was, it was yeah, amazing. I, I know like, your brain was like cooking looking at that. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I, I can, my, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yeah, it. one of the people that I was with, she was like, "Yeah, we're in the uh, alternate dimension, the alternate reality." Because <laughs> how in the world does this happen? Yeah, but exactly. Um, the interesting thing was that in the book, the alchemist he ends up going to the oasis in the middle of the desert, <laughs> and look. <laughs> That's how you feeling right now. You feeling like, oh, buddy. <laughs> No, I think that was crazy. I think that was crazy because okay, so the first time I came to That's live a cool in reference. exactly, I yeah. was like, "What?" He's <laughs> <No. laughs> like, "I'm tweaking." <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Real. That's cool. And you know, it was crazy though because before I even went on the trip, I literally was not. I wasn't consciously thinking about it, but I read the book. <laughs> I read the book again before I went on the trip. Oh like, man, I, that's. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably read that book like five times now, five or six times. But yeah, it's a classic. Every time I read it, yeah, every time I read it, I realize something new. And so I totally did not think about the fact that he was in the oasis and like stuff like that. So to go there and like that's literally where he met the alchemist. And I was like, wow. And it was it was very beautiful. It was very beautiful there. Um, I camped and stuff like that, and that was really nice. We had like a whole fire and stuff like that. So it was like a very nice experience. Um, it was hot. I can say that I like the areas in the palm trees and stuff more as opposed to like the Salt Lake areas and stuff like that. It was just, I guess, because right now I'm at like 7,000 feet of ele elevation and stuff like that. So going down, that was below sea level. Mm -hmm. So the difference in like the altitude and then the weather, it was just kind of like irking me. So I felt the best when I was around the palm trees and stuff. But yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I yeah, mean, that's all I have for that part. <laughs> you wasn't out there like sweating to death, was you? Um, not too too much. It was I think it was maybe like 70 something. I think it got to maybe like 80 degrees and stuff. I was about to say you should be used to heat living uh I know, where you live in before Alabama. here. Yeah, living in Alabama and Might stuff. Might as well be living in um, an oven. But it was a very um different experience. I just, I don't know. I'm living out here in such a dry place. I'm like, I really want to live by some water. <laughs> it's right. kind of, yeah, I went to go live in the opposite of where I should be. So, <laughs> but I think it, I came here or I was led here just so I could realize like, yeah, I really do need to be by some water. Like, yep. I, yeah. The way I look at it, aren't you like a fire sign of some sort? Yeah, uh, it's Leo. Yep. I and I have so. water. I have water placements though, strong water placements. So, like what? Like uh, your big three. Cancer. What do you mean? Like is one of your big three a uh, um a water it's sign? A water sign, yeah. Which one? Your rising or your moon? Rising. Oh, yeah. I mean, just yeah. in general though, fire sign egos in general, y'all need to be like some water <laughs> or really? just at Why least around that? water people like somebody who's like a, a cancer can you cool need, us down somebody yeah, can cool you us. need a cancer as a friend yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so they can just cry all day you be like bro shut up <laughs> y'all need each other <laughs> mm, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> nah you get you a cancer <laughs> dude who's extra needy <laughs> Be all up under you and shit. Get away from me. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know. Cause I do have an my um my moon is Aquarius, so Oh yeah, never mind. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> nah, you no, this is not gonna work. <laughs> that is I know not... exactly how you feel. <laughs> I'm like, like, no, I like my independence. Just don't even talk. <laughs> don't say nothing. <laughs> yeah, just exist. That's enough for me, man. Exactly. Yo, no, literally, literally, I don't know. I really be thinking about myself because like it's crazy how I'm very inspired. <laughs> I'm very inspired by people. And like we don't even yeah. necessarily have to have a like we literally don't have to have a conversation or nothing. Like no. I don't know. I just really take in my environment and I get really inspired and stuff like that. And I don't know, I've just been really enjoying life. Like I've really been enjoying my experience lately. It's been very, very nice. So you feel more at peace now than you ever probably will, or you think you can even reach a higher level? I think peace? I can reach a higher level. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So, so the real question is, did you uh, meet the alchemist? I mean, did you meet an alchemist while you was out there in the oasis? Mm, not necessarily. I wouldn't say it like that. I guess I kind of just see myself see myself as the alchemist a lot of the times oh, I, think, shit. Okay. I think that like I think I get really inspired or um spoken to by nature like I feel like nature is usually what comes to me to to teach me things so if it if it were for me to meet like an alchemist or something it'd probably be through some type of natural type of experience or something like that like nature because so like, alchemy is really real alchemy is really just transformation so yeah i was gonna say like it'll be like you just reach a higher level of consciousness within yourself mm, being, but being look, somewhere in, in a different natural yeah and look, landscape so, <laughs> yes and what i had thought about this was the first time that i like that i like read a fire i didn't do that before like i used to look at candles wait um, you were like scrying like fire. You That's know what, what scrying you call it? is? Yeah, scrying. Well, I mean, people scry in like mirrors or like crystal balls and shit, but Oh, what is messages in a fire? Because okay, so yeah. here where I work, I work at um a place where we sell like Native American arts and crafts and stuff like that. And I've been learning and so like um in the Navajo culture they read the fires and stuff like that or they get messages through it like especially mm -hmm. especially like the medicine men and stuff like that so you can see as you're working with someone or like even if you're looking yourself like you can see messages you can sometimes see people in the fire and so yeah because we had like logs and stuff out there and everything um and so I could just see stuff. <laughs> I could just see stuff. But a lot of times for me, um, things come through like visions. Like I'll see stuff, then I get a vision. Or I'll literally mm, okay. see. Yeah, I literally. <laughs> like you just taking this in. Like, oh. You, you yeah, yeah, no, nah, this, is, this is good. <laughs> I like uh, people that yeah. um, have visions are usually, they can, uh like here they also have like a, the ability to all their other senses they can have visions through those other senses if that makes uh, sense so okay as i'm hearing this probably like next year you'll be like oh yeah now i'm just hearing and now i'm feeling things you know i'm just kind of mm -hmm. seeing how you progressing through time which is cool yeah definitely progressing it's surprising mm -hmm. me i'm like what i didn't even well, know i could say come on where were you at though you're like in the perfect place for it and you're surrounded that's by true. that energy too so that's true that's yeah. true that's that's true that's uh yep that makes so much sense but yeah so overall it was like a very good trip and then i also saw um vegas for the first time which was interesting during the day it was um very beautiful it was very beautiful i really liked it so and then yeah at night it's like hella artificial <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it looked like a endless yeah. strip club 
<laughs> Look, I mean, Oh, hey, yo, so there's this artist, right, named Krista Kim. I don't, I think I told you about her, but she creates, like, these gradients in uh, different places on these TVs and stuff like that that are healing. So, um, you know, that big ball, that huge thing in Vegas Yeah. that they built out there? So they Yeah. commissioned her to do a gradient for that. So I don't know when it's supposed to be, Oh, that but... should be dope. Man, look, and it's she did that in Times Square too. She had like uh for like I think a week there was a time in time like a moment in Times Square where you would just get healed. So I'm That like, is so cool. yeah, I just want to That put that is so out there. cool. Like people are fusing healing with technology now, and I mean, Wow, I didn't even know they could do that like that, like that. That's oh cool. yeah. But Damn, see, that's really cool. the the light work people are on the move. Just this conversation alone should kind of give you a um like a good little preview to that. So yeah, this was Yeah. this is good. I I like this episode already. Exactly. It's Okay. pretty much I almost mean, over though. it is. It is. I'm I looking mean, forward. I mean, you definitely have some else, find some else to talk about. <laughs> have something well, else in the future. I mean, pretty this is pretty much our own series. I think like we'll we'll just keep making these and then see what happens because I don't know. I I feel like people have conversations like this, but they're not that good It's though. not us, though. It feel artificial. It feel like, <laughs> but it just yeah. sounds really trendy, bro. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I hate the trendy stuff, sometimes. man. Sometimes. Some of them I've come across were, like, pretty good. But sometimes it is better when the person is just, like, when it's just them. I feel like I get, like, a lot more authentic videos when it's just one person. Mm hmm. And then, yeah, sometimes when it is two people, it can be like that. But I've come across a few where, like, the people are, like, genuinely... connecting and it's like authentic and it's really cool and so I don't know it's probably because they got to know each other like how we've Yeah, had yeah, meeting yeah. we've had meetings This before was not scripted. so like exactly so like we already got some type of <laughs> you know so it's already like it's yeah, just we cool do have good chemistry on camera. Like, yeah we'll get on here. I know before we're just like, so what are we talking about? But they they wouldn't know that. Y'all wouldn't know that. This was all scripted. That's That was the outro. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what to say, y'all. <laughs> Until Um next time. I'm gonna I'm gonna get give like my social media links <laughs> to shoes so he can put them in the description oh yeah. for the video. And Uh, what's that's pretty the much main it. thing everyone should go to though? Like, what's the number one thing? Um Facebook and Instagram. And And then it'll have my Etsy links on those. okay. And what's the name Yeah. of your uh? And the What's Canvas what's your name Herbal. on Facebook? <laughs> my name, mine, No, my the name of your business. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Like the Facebook Olive Beth you want to Artistry. go to. Okay. Okay, Olive Beth Artistry is where you can find us on Facebook. And then it's the same on Instagram, but it's all one word. So Olive Beth Artistry. Um, and you spell it A-L-E-P-H. And then Beth is B-E-I-T-H and then artistry. And Yeah, so, if you yeah. can't spell that, you screwed. Mm. But we're going to have it in there in the description for them. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all like this episode and want more content like that, please like this video, leave some comments, you know, tell us nice things because we like positive stuff. Um, or you could just leave an emoji with a happy face. Like, Yeah, send this us was some positive. love. Or yeah, a little, put some little hearts, <laughs> lightning bolts and hearts. Um, also, if you are... interested in what i do you can always find me on anything just type in laura shoot on google and my face will pop up i'm pretty sure so Okay. Okay. i think that might be it for everything today thanks for watching everybody it's laura shoot and it's some more and we had a great conversation hopefully this will actually become a legit series but for now y'all just stay tuned for these episodes every time we put them out share these with your friends and family members holla Bye.